All right, wanted to do a walk around and a cold start video. 1959 Land Rover Series 2. I've owned this since, I believe it was January of 2016. Purchased it from California, I believe it was Sacramento area. Had it shipped to Tennessee. Before that, it spent its time in uh, Nevada. And then it's been up here in New York with me for about a year. However, there was no winter driving on this. As you'll see by the chassis here in a minute. A little bit of history. Uh, the owner I purchased it from uh, states he's the second owner. The first owner uh, purchased it new in California and lived in Nevada, I believe. And that's where he bought it. Uh, when he purchased it uh, from the widow, <clears throat> of the gentleman uh, that owned it and for a little commemorance he put his initials and the uh, year of the Land Rover on a uh, UK license plate. Alright, let's do a cold start. During the colder uh, months, it does require a little bit of choke. No smoke. Pop the hood here. Oil pressure when you're driving usually sits about uh, 50 psi. Temperature usually hovers around 175, 180, which is correct for that thermostat. Fuel gauge aftermarket works. Over here, the fuel gauge, the original fuel gauge, does not work. Uh, the amps are for a generator, not an alternator. And the speedometer does work. It does state 10,990 miles. I believe that to be 100,000, uh, over 100,000 miles. Your alternate, your light comes on. And your oil pressure light does not come on. Windshield wipers do work, although this one is a little anemic, maybe lack of water. That one's 
a little stronger. Lights do work. Interior lights, although hard to see, they do function. talk about a few things on the outside here real quick um, previous owner did replace the head gasket in the motor and he replaced the clutch and uh, brake master cylinders uh, which are located under this wing which you have to remove to replace them uh, so in his wisdom he decided to make an access uh, panel uh, for future replacements if necessary and that's a big plus the original owner uh, did install a door vent uh, kind of popular back in the day I believe and that actually aids in cooling your feet motoring down the highway While it's not original, it is functional. As you look in the motor bay, you'll see a black type of paint. That is original, and what they did in the day, that was their uh, way of soundproofing the motor. Uh, the original paint shown here. The bulkhead is rust free. In fact, I would say the entire truck is rust free. Minus a few areas of surface corrosion. All right. Previous owner did also replace the, uh, all the solid clutch and brake lines. And then I replaced the three rubber uh, brake lines, both to the front wheels and one to the rear. I also did replace the uh, carburetor with a Weber, new alternator, new clutch slave cylinder, new Petronics distributor. Really aids in that uh, everyday driving. You don't have to worry about points. All electric however when they do fail they fail and a new coil to go along with it I did also replace the uh, the bean can or the brake slash clutch reservoir uh, with a reproduction new one from Rovers North the radiator is original I had it cleaned repaired a small hole and put her back a lot of the wiring is original uh, my next job was actually to replace the harness before I decided to uh, to put her up for sale but everything is functional uh, over the years Previous owners have uh, replaced bits of wire here and there. When you're looking at these series trucks, uh, part of the, uh, the issues that come with these is the steel bulkheads. One way to tell how solid they are is by these spot welds. But these have been covered up with body filler at one time 
you can bet it has been repaired to some extent. This is very solid. Absolutely no rust. Now right here, what looks to be rust is actually primer. Previous owner did paint this. The original color, however, it's a slight more matte than the original, I believe. Body panels do show evidence of body filler here and there. Right there. Not bad, though. Panels are relatively straight, though. The overhead lights work, but are not hooked up. I did replace all the door fixings with stainless steel and the brass fixing that goes there. Again, what you're seeing here is not rust, but the primer underneath the paint. As you're moving along these body panels, you can see these spot welds. Pretty good condition for the year of the truck. Now along with the option is a painting I had commissioned. It's an oil on canvas. I forget the dimensions of it right off bat, but uh, uh, this is a picture I took of it actually in Tennessee. some barn wood frame there. Roof rack is a Voyager. A lot of bugs here. And I had the addition of a World War II trenching tool. Kind of fit the part. Now under this speak under this sticker here is a hole that was cut out, I believe, for a rear reverse light. I'll show you that here. I don't know if that was original or added through the snowshoes in there and the poles just for aesthetic purposes. The rear backup light does work. It is not hooked up. Headliner is good. Again, you can tell in the in the back here their attempt at I don't know what you would call that uh, some type of liner, very thin at the time. Floor panel is aluminum. There is evidence of corrosion, slight corrosion, on the rear door here. very solid. No holes.
wheels were new from the previous owner. I've put about, oh, probably eight, six to 8,000 miles on them. These do have the aftermarket locking hubs. Ferry. Again, not rust. Of course, this is aluminum panel, but the, the undercoating underneath. Doors are in good shape. There is some surface corrosion here and there. No holes, nothing to be concerned with. So the seat box here is the original green. And it's slightly different than the outside. The outside is a little more faded. This is, has a little bit more of a, a luster to it. Here's your third setting for air conditioning. Your second setting are your vents. And your first setting is your door vent. Now what's unique with these Series 2 trucks, very few things are, are different than the Series 2As, but a, a few things that you can, you can tell the difference are the round knobs versus the levers. And this front piece right here is more rounded versus square. Those are some of the, the big differences. Not too many differences, but there are a few. The seats are a uh, Exmoor uh, reproduction elephant tied seat in good shape. The matting is also Exmoor. There's a little surface corrosion on the floor panels. Nothing rusted through, but there is a little surface corrosion. I put a little rust inhibitor on there a while back. The seat belts in the day were an option and I added these, although you could add a little more modern of a seat belt for safety purposes, but I, I like the aesthetics. Smith's heater, shin burner. Um, not much for a heater, to be honest with you. Corrosion on the mirror fixings. The transmission, let me get under the truck here. Oh boy, yeah, that was fun. That was sarcasm. Uh, I replaced the transmission uh, sometime in 2016. It's a new old stock transmission from Pangolin 4x4. And that included the transfer case as well. It does have your various rover, rover leaks slash weeps. Nothing to be concerned with though.
also had the the suspension replaced along with all the body bushings the steering box I resealed it was weeping it doesn't leak any oil now a little harder to tell the light There's absolutely no corrosion on this truck. There's more corrosion on the new springs than the 1959 chassis. So did replace all four brakes, both pads, or I'm sorry, brake drums and uh, shoes. That is dust. The second owner did replace the fuel tank as well, so that's not too old. I replaced the mechanical fuel pump with an electric, <laughs> big improvement. No more vapor lock. I replaced the front drive shaft as well. Replaced all the bulb joints with greasable ball joints. have it. If you have any questions, please let me know.